Hi, I'm Sohail. I'm an entrepreneur, dentist, gearhead, and thinker. I graduated from Pitt Dental Medicine in May 2021. And as a dental student, I founded Zero Decay, a technology startup last year. But before I speak more about Zero Decay, I want to step back and talk to you more about the mindset which led to the formation of Zero Decay. It started when I was 16. At the time, I was doing what I would later learn is called community organizing. But I was not organizing any march or protest. It was your regular run-of-the-mill toppling of a dictatorship. It was the kind like my brothers and sisters did in the Arab Spring. It just so happened that this dictatorship was at my local mosque. My work organizing to elect a new e-board taught me to make radical change requires doing the most simplistic yet effective action. I spent a year reaching out to my community members, telling them about the vision that we were building. But on election day, few people were there, but the other side did something so simple yet effective. They handed a list of candidates they wanted people to vote for. That failure taught me while informing people was a noble action. It was not what was needed to elect a new e-board. What was needed was to get people to vote by setting a vision for what change looks like. With that simple insight, our side won the next election handily. And this victory led to new people joining the e-board and we were able to transform a stale bureaucracy. Being a first generation immigrant, I have seen the value of taking calculated risks. My dad grew up on a farm in a time of great change in Pakistan, being born shortly after Pakistan had declared its independence to uh, create East and West Pakistan. And as a 16 year old himself, he saw great change in Pakistan as well, because as a 16 year old, he saw East Pakistan declare its own independence to become Bangladesh and West Pakistan to become Pakistan proper. My mother grew up as the second youngest with a tough, hardworking single mother, raising her and her siblings in the slums of Punjab. This was at a time where single motherhood was looked down upon in Pakistani society. But by daring greatly, my grandmother successfully raised sons and daughters and lifted her family from absolute poverty. Fast forward, and I was born the youngest of two and grew up to be a rebellious yet sensitive child. I had a knack for getting into trouble, but I also had a heart for caring for the weak amongst us. Like how I would continuously feed the stray alley cats to a point that they would show up at our front door. But who on occasion would catch a glimpse of the chickens that we were raising. But I would continue to care for the alley cats despite knowing that the risks that they posed, as did they not deserve a living just because they lived on the streets? From the terrace, I could see a tent that a family had erected a block from our house. I had always wondered what could I have learned if I had been willing to take the risk and say salam to that family? Why had I not shown that family the same level of care I had shown to the alley cats. I remember the night we immigrated to America. I had to say goodbye to the family who lived on the side of the streets without ever knowing their name. I had to say goodbye to the tutor who lived across the street and whose house had a grove of hibiscus flowers in the front yard. And to the wasp net we had in our backyard that our, my brother and I would run from to avoid getting stung. Who would have guessed two brothers born to parents who had barely graduated high school would raise kids with the audacity to take risks? Or maybe it's not so surprising. My dad saw his friends go to war and my mom saw a role model for resilient courage. They knew the only thing predictable about life is that it's unpredictable. And surely this past year has taught us that. Randy Pausch, a CMU professor and author wrote, we cannot change the cards we're dealt, only how we play the hand. 
what first generation immigrants, I believe, like my parents and I have in spades is an entrepreneur's mindset. Meaning we recognize that the key to success is not avoiding risk, but learning to manage it. All entrepreneurs take calculated risk, course correct, and grow despite failure. With that mindset, it's something everyone must seek to develop as we will all face difficulties in achieving our childhood dreams. But by managing risk, we can learn to thrive. However, visionary entrepreneurs go one step further. They ask the question, what legacy do I wanna leave behind? Meaning, once all is said and done, how have I left the world better off? I knew once I got accepted into the Pitt Dental Medicine program, I would have unlikely faced issues being able to support myself as dentistry was recently ranked as the number two profession by US News and Reports. So by being a dentist, I had supplanted myself in the halls of the middle class. But to what end? A fancy house, a two car garage, 2.2 kids, a white picket fence? Is that the legacy I wanna leave behind? Surely I can dream bigger. We are taught those material things will bring us great joy. But once you achieve them, you realize what you should have done was taking on more risk. But by the time you realize this, time has passed you by. Because when we are young, we can take on more risk because failure often only impacts us individually. And we still have time to bounce back. I saw this exact mindset meeting a successful practice owner in the Bay Area who regretted choosing the safe path. It was during dental school orientation, I learned a valuable life lesson. Our advisor told us, as you embark on this academic career, you will form many close friendships with your classmates, but recognize that school is just one bucket of friends. You will need to develop bonds in other buckets outside of these walls. And by building a diverse network of connection, you will become a better doctor. So it's your job to put yourself in situations where you can build those connections beyond school. Hence, I put myself in uncomfortable situations. I joined a biking club. I had no idea such a thing existed. I learned to swim, or should I say, I tried learning to swim. I tried my hand at mountain climbing. I traveled to a new country without knowing the new language. I volunteered at the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, and I read books on topics outside of my comfort zone. I learned a new language. I immersed myself by taking business classes. It was while taking business classes at Joseph M. Catt School Graduate School of Business I learned of the power of business to amplify my impact as a dentist. Before starting dental school, I thought my legacy would be as a dental researcher, finding a cure for tooth decay. But what I learned in school was we had largely solved dental decay with the advent of fluoride. And what decay that remained was largely the result of habits and the environment. Yet, limited progress was made to tackle the habit component of dental decay. Yes, dentistry has progressed in its evidence-based practices, but it has largely sidelined the dentistry patients do day to day. This was quite in contrast to the way agile stage gate product development is done, where the customer's feedback directly impacts product development throughout the development cycle. To me, it's strange that dentists lack adequate tools to monitor their patient's oral care beyond a simple questionnaire. The irony is, if a business sidelines a customer's feedback in product development, the product is unlikely to succeed. Whereas if the patient's not able to maintain dental health, they could face serious health consequences. I saw a need 
for patients to play a more active role in their journey towards dental health and to create a tool for dentists to assess home care in their treatment planning decisions. With that mission, we launched Zero Decay, as in Zero Tooth Decay. Our mission is to empower individuals with technology to maintain dental health. Our first product is a smartphone app that enables anyone to log their brushing and flossing. Our next product is a smart toothbrush holder to enable parents to track their kids' oral care wirelessly, whether they use an electric or a manual toothbrush. We seek to promote great oral care in childhood as oral care habits are formed then. My work with community organizing taught me to look for the simple solution over the complicated one. Dentists know 70% of patients don't floss their teeth on a regular basis, but 70% of patients report that they brush twice a day. So if we want people to floss their teeth more often, why not put the floss right next to the brush? That's the simplest solution. So that's exactly what the Zero Decay Tooth Dot does. It holds toothpaste, two toothbrushes, either manual or electric, and floss. And by putting the oral care products together, there's no longer a question of finding floss at its, as it's right next to your brush. If the floss is right next to the toothbrush, why not make both smart enabled? That's exactly what we do. We upgrade a dollar store toothbrush and floss into a smart enabled one just by putting it into the holder. No longer must great oral care insights be limited by the type of brush you use. To make zero decay more accessible, we created a one-time setup process without the need to sync. Meaning once the zero dock is connected to Wi-Fi, you're done with the setup process. But what about when you travel? That's why we created a way to manually log oral care using just the app. Our vision is to create a tool for dentists and patients to get comprehensive insights about their oral care and to serve as a platform for them to connect. Our hope is by transforming oral care from a mundane task into mindful self-care, we can prevent dental disease and improve people's lives. But doing this requires taking a risk, stepping outside of the easy path into a path that's more difficult and that will require sacrifice. And sadly, one which might lead to failure. But I believe our mission to improve oral care is worthy of that risk. Because I know as a dentist, my impact is limited by how many patients I can see in a day. As chair time is the limiting variable for my impact. Whereas in business, no such limit exists. So with an entrepreneur's mindset, understanding the risk and benefit, I recently moved to the Silicon Valley area. My hope is by being in close proximity to a network of entrepreneurs and visionary, we can accelerate our work to create a world with zero decay. That is a legacy I believe is worth leaving behind. Improving oral care, not just for the select few, but for everyone. It was Nelson Mandela who said, it always seems impossible until it's done. So with that, I ask, what is the legacy you are building? Thank you.